settle down. Thank you all for joining us for this uh, GLAM session. Uh, if you're not here for the GLAM session, you're in the wrong room, so now is the time to move. Uh, we have an apology. Nepur, who is going to speak to us about GLAM in India, hasn't arrived in DC, we believe, yet. So, uh, unfortunately, she won't be speaking, which gives our other three speakers a little extra time and time for a few more questions. Uh, and if we have more time left at the end, I'm quite prepared to open up a roundtable discussion if people have issues they'd like to discuss. Or, of course, you can slope off early if you prefer. Um, also, Laurie has to leave us immediately after her session, so unfortunately there won't be any time for questions uh, for her, but I'm sure the rest of us will deal with questions as and when we can. Uh, our first speaker is Laurie Bird-Phillips, and she's going to talk to us about the state of Glamwiki in the USA. Laurie. Thank you, Andy. Oh, thanks. Oh, can you hear me okay with this mic? You can hear me all right? Okay. All right. Well, as Andy mentioned, I'm Lori Phillips, and throughout 2012, I've been serving as the U.S. Cultural Partnerships Coordinator for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, <laughs> um, today, I'll be sharing about how far outreach with galleries, libraries, archives, and museums um, has come in the U.S. over the past two years, what we've accomplished so far in 2012, and my hopes for the future um, beyond in the rest of 2012 and beyond. So let's start off with how we got where we are today. Um, two years ago, Wikipedia would not have been considered a core part of really any museums or libraries or archives mission. Um, most didn't really take Glam Wikimedia collaboration seriously until institutions like the British Museum back in 2010, thanks to Liam Wyatt, who's sitting in the back, <laughs> um, had his residency at the British Museum. And then that's when a lot of other libraries, archives, and museums really started to take interest and things started to really explode. Um, in the spring of 2011, we had our first GLAM camp in New York City. And GLAM camps are a place where um, Wikipedians involved in GLAM come together to develop tools and resources and best practices. Um, and this was really important for the global GLAM community to really bring together us as a community. And this first GLAM camp really helped to organize that community. It um, came at a perfect time. It was about a year after Liam's residency at the British Museum. I was about nine months into my residency at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. That's my other life. It's in Indianapolis at the Children's Museum. Um, and it was right about when Dominic McDevitt Parks, who is right there, he started his residency that summer at the National Archives, and Sarah Sturge was about to start hers at the Smithsonian. So beginning last summer, um, we all began to receive a surprising amount of, um, oh, with the, I'm sorry, there's going to be some slides that are a little off because I um, didn't do this on a Mac, so we'll see how things go from there, <laughs> from there. that's okay. Um, so we all began to receive a surprising um, amount of press. And this really started to get the prestige going um, in a way in the US. Um, we weren't really expecting this, but we kind of just went with it. Um, so Dominic was in the Huffington Post and the Atlantic and actually many other publications. Um, and just for some more examples, um, Sarah was in the Chronicle of Philanthropy, among other publications. And um, Richard um, Nipel up in Wikimedia New York City, he um, had a lot of press for his edit-a-thons at the New York Public Library. Um, both in the American Libraries Association and in the New York Times. And the British Library also was covered in the New Yorker, so we had a lot of press going on. Around the same time um, of William Kemp, New York, I had the opportunity to write for the Center for the Future of Museums, which is an arm of the American Association of Museums. I'm going to be talking a bit about them today. Um, we call them AAM, just for future reference. And this led me to also write a piece for the printed AAM Museum magazine, and all of this led to a lot of interest in GLAM in the US. We weren't still really considered mainstream at that point. So last June, this tweet came out from the Center for the Future of Museums. Basically, Wikipedians and residents trend or fad. And this was in reaction, actually, to Dominic's residency. And there was a lot of press coming out. I don't think I've ever been more excited and frustrated by a tweet <laughs> in my life, but um, it really encouraged me to prove that Glam was here to stay. We weren't just a fad, we were a trend. And wouldn't you know it, um, a year later, oh, sorry again, a year later, the Center for the Future of Museums put out um, in their inaugural Trends Watch report 
um, all about Wikipedians and residents. So we weren't a fad, we were a trend, and this was about nine months after that original tweet. So by this past December, um, we had many cultural institutions that were already working with us. Those are the ones that are in white, and if you can barely see the light gray in the background, um, are ones that were just waiting to get started, that were waiting in the pipeline. And that was when I started my cultural partnerships coordinator position um, this past December. So in this role as U.S. Cultural Partnerships Coordinator, I have three main core goals. Um, those are to continue support and outreach for GLAM professionals through documentation, publications, and presentations, bringing together the GLAM Wiki community to connect with each other and to more easily support GLAMs, and connecting that GLAM Wiki community with cultural professionals and a new self-sufficient professional network. Um, and I'll be talking about that in a second. Oh, that came out good. That's what I was worried about, all of my words there. So take it in. <laughs> um, one of our main outreach efforts was at the American Association of Museums, um, who invited us to present about GLAM in the panel, Wikipedia and the Museums, um, in the museum, lessons from Wikipedians and residents. Um, it was actually the first time five Wikipedians and residents were in one place at one time. But I think now we have about 10 in one place at one time. So we have to do something about that. I've got to get a picture, just for the record. <laughs> Um, the fact that they invited us was really a pretty big deal. AAM is the largest museum conference in the U.S. with about 4,000 attendees. And with 150 sessions, we were also chosen to be one of the 10 that were part of their online conference as well. So we reached even more people through this conference. And it really became a major turning point for the GLAM movement. Um, it was the first time that it became clear that museums were really embracing Wikipedia as a tool to further in their missions. And that was what was really important to us. We went in expecting to do a lot of convincing still with these museums, but really it wasn't about the why anymore. It was about the how. That's all that they wanted to know. Um, so on the screen is a quote from a recap that was written by a museum blogger who actually attended our session, and he went back and one of his recaps was completely about our session and talking about how museums need to go and get involved with Wikipedia. Um, AAM was also the start of our cooperation with the Getty Museum in LA, and my contact there told me that it was AAM that turned her colleagues around and really made them start thinking seri seriously about Wikipedia. She actually tweeted just today, um, Wikipedia has come of age as a serious resource. And that was Maria Gilbert, who's the senior editor at the Getty Museum. So following on the heels of AAM, um, this idea that GLAM had finally made it really followed through at Museum Next, which is um, an international museum technology conference that took place this year in Barcelona. And um, this is Nancy Proctor, who's the head of mobile strategies at the Smithsonian. And during her keynote, she completely framed everything around Wikipedia um, as an example of a distributed community of experts and engaged contributors. Um, it was really inspiring. And we will use this slide with Nancy with the big Wikipedia behind her forevermore, I'm sure. Um, but in fact, three of the four keynotes at the conference included Wikipedia as an example. And Wikipedia was brought up over and over and over again in the sessions. And we were all really surprised by that. Once again, we went in thinking we were going to be convincing. And again, it was not about the why, it was about the how. And this was really the first time that I saw museum professionals telling each other repeatedly that Wikipedia is a useful, relevant resource that's really worth pursuing. So it wasn't us anymore. It's them telling each other. And so that was what this really, this turning point or watershed moment really was all about. So it hasn't just been museums that have been doing things. I come from the museum field, so I focus a lot on that. But the archives and the libraries fields have been doing incredible things as well. Um, Dominic and the staff at the US National Archives have been doing their own outreach, including David Ferriero, who's the archivist of the United States. And this is him and his quote up here. Oh, that one didn't turn out as well. Sorry about that. Um, you'll be able to hear him speak on Saturday. So look forward to that. And the National Archives' outs outspoken support of Wikipedia has really been important in the US, and particularly in their open government plan for 2012-2014. Um, they included Wikipedia repeatedly in that and how they were, you know, in, in Wikipedia is such an important part of their open policy. So it's really important. And then with the libraries, all right. Libraries have also come into their own over the past two years, um, especially with Wiki Loves Libraries um, has been very successful, and um, that will be replicated again this fall. When I began my pos position with the foundation, 
I really, really wanted to see more of the L in glam. And that's really happened a lot with um, particularly the, let's see, the Online Computer Library Center, because I always call it OCLC, <coughs> so I always have to remember. <laughs> Mary Lee Profit's with us today, and that is her quote up there. Um, and she's responsible for getting Max Klein in as the Wikipedian in residence at the OCLC, and that's a huge step forward with libraries. So I was thrilled with all of that. So once again, this was the result of all of our outreach. I'll remind you, um, this was what we were looking at um, in December. And after all this outreach this year, we are now here. Once again, I don't know if you can see all the gray, but there are a lot of museums, libraries, and archives that are still in the pipeline waiting for support and waiting to be helped. This is all just in the United States. So um, this brings me to what my next goal is is how do we address all of the support that we need to give to these museums, libraries, and archives. And really it's bringing the Glam with US community together to connect with these Glams. So we did this this past February at Glam Camp DC. And it was actually the third or fourth Glam Camp since our first one in New York. And um, we began the process here in DC. We brought 30 Wikipedians and residents, or not, about four Wikipedians and residents, 30 Wikipedians and cultural professionals together. And we tried to establish a system for GLAMs to more easily connect with Wikipedians. This came in the form, sorry again for the bad slide. This came in the form of the GLAM Wiki um, portal, or the GLAM US portal. And the goal of this space is to allow cultural professionals to be more self-sufficient in finding the resources that they need to connect with us. Um, and this space will link you out to the case studies in the globalglamwiki.org. So there's a lot of resources in main Glam Wiki space that's on outreach. This li lives in English Wikipedia, um, but it's just a little bit different in how it connects to the US community. Um, it includes a connect page, a contribute page, and a bookshelf, and I'm gonna tell you about those next. So the Glam Connect page has different lists of Wikipedians that Glam professionals can come in and easily look to what they need. So if they need um, online Wikipedians, they can go to this list of online Wikipedians. If they need an outreach <laughs> Wikipedian, they can go there. Um, and one example that we came up with at Glam Camp in DC was um, to create state pages. So, sorry, if you can see through the words there. This is, Glam, this is the page for Indiana. And this is a really useful resource um, for just going directly to your locale, and you can find wiki projects that relate to your state, um, campus ambassadors that might be in your area, or other um, local Wikipedians that might be available to help you. The GLAM contribute page um, really walks GLAM professionals through, thinking through what their resources that they have can be applied to Wikipedia, um, and once again, how to connect, and um, just what other resources, like the Glam Bookshelf, they can use to convince their museums, libraries, and archives to connect. So um, the Glam Bookshelf compiles PowerPoints, handouts, and project plans that the whole global Glam community has created. And one of the important things is, once you get one Glam professional hooked, they need to go back and explain that to their staff. So they need a place to go to find these resources so that they can then convince their staff and be advocates so it was really important to find a place to really bring all those resources together, and that's in the Glam Bookshelf. So Glam Connect, um, oh, I'm sorry, what's next for Glam US? As I said, you saw that list of all of those museums. What we need next is more online volunteers, just more Wikipedian volunteers, and we're still far from the point of having a specific Wikimedian for each museum that really needs help. Um, and that's really the next step that we need. So if you're interested in helping, please sign up <laughs> on Claim Connect. We'll always take more help. So for the rest of 2012, the focus really will be on um, making a self-sustaining GLAM community in the US. And GLAM professionals have really come into their own um, as experts in and of themselves, really, over the past two years. We have advocates in museums, libraries, and archives all over, and we really need to get glams helping glams, rather than everything coming through a handful of Wikipedians. So I am really hoping and envisioning for a what we're calling a Glam Wiki US consortium, where it's just this professional network where people can come together and share resources, chat, dialogue, just whatever, together, and it not have to go through a handful of individuals. Um, 
So that's the focus for now. We're hoping in the future this can build and build. Maybe one day it might be its own nonprofit. That might be in the future. But for now, we're just focusing on what does this look like? Is it an email list? Is it a website? Is it a blog? I don't know yet. I want the GLAM professionals to come to us and us to talk together and figure out what will work best for everybody. Um, another thing that I'm really eager to pursue is really better connecting with the Wikipedia education program. We've talked about this a lot. Um, it really makes sense to connect these two projects in a more distinct way. Um, we need the help, as you've seen. We need people, while the education program is creating <laughs> from scratch. All of these you know, super enthusiastic students that want to do something valuable in Wikipedia and want to know what's that next project I can help with beyond my classroom setting. So we really need to get better about connecting those resources in a more specific way. And after this year, what I really hope to see are GLAMs really feeling more empowered and supported enough to do big things through Wikimedia partnerships. We've come far, but we still have a really long ways to go. Um, in the future, I hope to see more institutions stepping up, like the Indiana Historical Society, who took their director of education and shifted her role to be Wikipedia and research editor. So Elaine Rosa is the Wikipedia in residence at the Historical Society. She's originally a GLAM professional and a new Wikipedian and she's just doing her best to establish this long-term partnership and get it off on the right foot. And that's really what we want, are just for experts in cultural institutions to really become a part of the Wikipedia community and not just stand on the sidelines. And we're definitely getting there. So, that is the state of GLAM in the US. <laughs> and I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm sorry that I have to leave early, but please come find me if you have any questions or thoughts or suggestions. And thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Laurie. That was excellent. And I'm sure um, people who know her would agree with me that Laurie's contribution to GLAM in the, U in the US has been absolutely invaluable uh, and has led to a lot of uh, development in quite a number of institutions. So thank you again, Laurie. Um, for those of you who arrived late, uh, w where were you? Uh, and you, you missed me saying that unfortunately the poor can't be with us, so we won't be hearing about glam and outreach in India, unfortunately. Uh, I believe her arrival in Washington has been delayed. And I don't think I introduced myself, which was very rude of me. My name is Andy Mabbott. I'm pigs on the wing on Wikipedia and on Twitter. And I'm active in glam activities in the United Kingdom, which is why I've got this strange accent. How are you going, Piers? Do you want me to ad lib for a bit? Yeah. Okay, I can sing, I can tell jokes. Uh, maybe singing is. Yeah, perhaps okay. not. Not a good idea at all. <laughs> okay, um, just as a, a quick show of hands then, how many people here from the US? Quite a good showing. Quite from the UK? Okay. Hello, folks. From the rest of Europe? And where are the rest of you from? Africa? India? Anybody from South America? Brazil. 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 Anybody from Asia? India. India, you said yes. Oh, well, that's a good smattering. We've got glam activities in all those areas, believe it or not. Um, in fact, I think the only continent we haven't got a glam activity in at the moment is Antarctica. <laughs> but we've got to wait for them to get a gallery, library, archive, or museum before we can move in and operate with them. Well, I'm absolutely going to have to uh, do what I always do in, if, as we're still waiting, which is to talk about QRpedia. <laughs> um, some of you have heard me do that already, I can tell from the laughter. I'm, one of the projects I'm active on, on, which is allied to GLAM but not solely GLAM, is QRpedia, which is putting QR codes in galleries, libraries, archives and museums, uh, linking to Wikipedia articles, uh, but in such a way that when people scan them, they get the version of the language a version of the article in the language that their de mobile device is using. So a museum or a gallery can display one QR code and serve an article in French, English, Russian, Japanese, Korean, or any one of a number of languages. Uh, so I would urge you to come to our workshop on Saturday afternoon when Laurie and I will both be presenting if you'd like to know more about that. Um, but I would also urge you to think of innovative places where you can put a QRpedia QR code because it's not just for glams. And already back home in Birmingham, I've put them into a railway station and a church. And somebody in India has seen that and uh, put them into a Hindu temple in Mumbai. 
Is that you? Yeah. Oh, no, nice to meet you. Not you, <laughs> OK. But um, so we're looking for other uh, unusual places. So anything, any place, park, building, um, brewery that has uh, an article on Wikipedia can have a QR code linking to that article. So I challenge you to come up with something that we haven't already thought of and get a QR code put up. Uh, there is a Wikipedia article on QRpedia, of course, where you can read more about it. Uh, and if you go to the talk page, there is a link to the project for QRpedia. This is on the English Wikipedia, I should say. The, the article is in about 20 languages. But on the English Wikipedia, there is a link to the project page, which in turn links to a how-to guide that shows you how to create the codes. So you can all have a go at that. Uh, and you can print four or eight codes onto a single sheet of paper. So if you've got a small church in your community that's on Wikipedia, you can get it online for, for 20 cents or the equivalent. It's very, very cheap to do indeed. Uh, if you want to spend a lot more money putting ceramic plaques or plastic labels on things, you can do. Uh, and while you're in Washington, if you have time, if you get to go to the Congressional Cemetery, which is at the rear of the Capitol from here, um, they have 60 QR codes linking through QRpedia to Wikipedia articles on the tombs and memorials for notable people, including J. Edgar Hoover and the composer Sousa. So you can actually see that working uh, in Washington. Are we ready to go? Yeah. Um Sorry, so I'm a computer scientist, so you see I don't know how okay. does this work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome Pierre Slim, who's going to talk to us about Toulouse. Thank you. Yeah, so, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Toulouse. Uh, Laurie talk about uh, US GLAM and awesome partnership uh, with the Smithsonian, a huge institution. Well, I'm going to be more local, uh, speak less about Wikipedia, maybe a bit more about Commons, but I hope it will be great too. Um, so what I want to speak about is the context of our reclam actions. Um, it's a bit uh, to state a bit the problem. Um, the action we did without partnership because we can't do glam without uh, having a, a partnership with glam uh, with glam institution. Uh, also, sometimes we need uh, to have uh, this partnership. What we did uh, with uh, with partnerships and few conclusions and ideas that I think are good when you're local. Uh, first, uh, the context. Um, in fact, uh, in Toulouse, it's a small city far away from Paris in France, but we have a dozen of uh, museums. Uh, some are big, like uh, the Natural, Muse uh, Natural History Museum. Can you uh, talk the, the microphone okay. so that Excuse me. Do you want to use a lectern for Philip on the other side? Would that, or would you not be able to reach your computer? Okay. I will sit, sit down. Um, some are big, like the Natural History Museum. Some are just normal, like the Fine Arts Museum. Some are really small, like the Roman Museum. Uh, it's like uh, two rooms uh, with a uh, few busts uh, in it. And we have something like 20 libraries. Um, and of course, the city archives. Um, I've put some pictures uh, from uh, the Zlan, for example. Um, the first one is interesting because uh, it's a pictures of one of the museums we have, and uh, the, this picture was taken by uh, the curator of the Natural History Museum from Toulouse uh, back in uh, 1905, I think. And the picture is uh, in the archive of uh, the city of Toulouse. Others are just uh, pictures to illustrate the slide. So how we can do GLAM in Toulouse? Uh, we have something like three volunteers to, who are interested in, the, in GLAM uh, in, uh, in the city. Um, we have a staff, uh, a staff uh, of the chapters which is based in uh, Paris. So it's, uh, well, there is a distance. It's far away for us. Uh, in Cars, it's almost a day of trip. And the staff is not un entirely uh, dedicated to, to the GLAM, so they can't do it uh, 24, hours, uh, 24 hours a day or what the law uh, authorizes them to, to work. And, well, other volunteers can help remotely when uh, you have to upload pictures or, or do things, but we have to use uh, our resource quite... Uh, 
uh, quite efficiently to, to, per, to achieve something. Um, so the first thing, as we, uh, we need to, to be efficient, I will talk about uh, actions we, we can do and we do uh, without partnerships. Um, first thing, we can write articles. Well, we are Wikipedians, so we, we know how to do that. And sometimes we, we do it greatly, so it's OK. Um, there, are, there is online references. We can still buy books, uh, and books can be bought by, uh, by your chapters um, if uh, you don't have the money. Uh, we can take pictures. Uh, often it's allowed to take pictures in a museum, so you can take pictures. You, you have the description of, of the pictures and, and put it on commons. But it's not always easy. Uh, for example, sometimes in museum, uh, descriptions uh, in the public uh, exhibition are not accurate or are missing. Um, some items are even not exposed. For example, in the Natural History Museum, there are something like 3,000 items exposed for 2.5 million uh, billions uh, of items. So it's a lot. Um, in France, uh, we have a, a urban legend that uh, flash flashlight uh, are destroying items, so we can't take pictures with a uh, flashlight or tripods. And for example, uh, these pictures, I took it uh, in the Smithsonian uh, Muse uh, Natural Museum of History a um, few days ago, but uh, the problem is that uh, I don't have the, the description. Uh, I don't know which bird it is. <laughs> I, I, maybe I found it, but I, I'm not sure which, which bird it is. So. You see, even uh, when you can use your flashlight, because flashlights are, are authorized in the Smithsonian, you have a beautiful picture, but you don't know what it is. So in this time, you need to talk about with the curator or with someone of the museum. And it's uh, where uh, I think partnerships uh, are good. For example, uh, another example of what we can do uh, without anyone helping you um, during a a temporary exhibition. We took uh, the pictures of all the uh, of all the paintings uh, in the temporary exhibition, and we just uh, make a galleries with uh, the description and uh, by room for all the the picture. So we have an online galleries of uh, of this exhibition. It's okay. So we have all the paintings uh, by room. And it cost us two tickets uh, for the exhibition, so it's uh, quite cheap. Uh, things and uh, volunteer times so well generally we say it's uh, zero dollar but uh, um, the problem uh, in fact uh, four paintings are missing uh, the quality is not really good because we have shadows of the um, we have shadows on it because the lightning is not uh, really uh, really good uh, we may have some noise on some pictures so it's not awesome it's good it's something you, you can show to someone but it's not a uh, not the best uh, thing we can do. Uh, OK, so if someone wants to check it out, it's on commands. Uh, and uh, well, yeah, I, can, I can give you the link uh, at, the end, uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, another thing we like to do, because we are not a lot, is to do workshop in GLAMS, but uh, with people of the GLAMS, so they can learn how to do workshop by themselves, in fact. Um, what we generally do is one or two workshops with uh, people from the GLAM, and after, they organize by themselves the same workshop, but without us. So I think it's something that Laurie uh, talked about, that she wants to remove the, uh, one of the, the objectives is to remove the, the nice Wikipedians that is helping. So that's what we try to do, because uh, we are not a lot, and we try to get the staff to contribute because they have a lot of knowledge, and well, we kn all know it. Uh, it's maybe the best, the best thing we can do. Um, well, help them uh, to organize the next workshop. Uh, I put that into the non-partnership uh, part, but it's not. It's museums where we have partnerships, but um, those actions were organized just by Twitter and. Uh, Say sending few emails, but nothing really formal. So that's why it's here. Um, for example, on the, 
I don't know if it's the left, okay. On the left uh, of the screen, uh, we have a pictures of uh, a tutorial on Wikipedia on commands for the Fugus project, which is a project to uh, new, uh, digit digitalize items from the Natural History Museum. Uh, with that guy, we, uh, I will talk about a bit after. Uh, for our action with partnerships, um, first I will tell you the story of how it started, because it's always interesting to know how partnerships start. Um, well, it starts really normally. Um, a user put a, me a message, uh, a newcomer put a message on his tutor uh, page that he wants to meet uh, with someone uh, of uh, the local chapter, Wikimedia France. And uh, in fact, uh, the chair of Wikimedia France saw this message and said, OK, uh, let's meet, have a coffee, and uh, we'll talk about it. Um, they talked a bit about it. Uh, that guy is a doctor uh, in real life. And as a hobby, uh, he's a naturalist. Uh, to tell you uh, which quality of hobby uh, it is, uh, he is president of the natural of the Institute of uh, Natural History in Toulouse, but uh, he is not paid for that. He does that really as a hobby. He gave uh, almost all his collection to the museum. So they talk about a, a partnership with the museum. So that was that was the start uh, of it. Few months after, this guy tried to contribute to Wikipedia to see if it was really serious thing. Uh, he was not sure it was a good, the, the good uh, media, but he tried. Um, he put some uh, original research uh, into Wikipedia, and um, in fact, uh, those contribution got deleted. <laughs> and he said, "Yes, it's okay. It's serious. Uh, there are people that are checking what I'm doing. Uh, I will go with that." So. Okay, it's funny because usually when people get things deleted, uh, it goes bad, but uh, this time it went really good. So you say, okay, the partnership with, uh, with the museum is moot, it's not, uh, it's not interesting, uh, let's do something bigger. Uh, I know people uh, in, um, um, I know the mayor, so let's go to the mayor and uh, do a partnership with the whole city because it's better. Um, so that's how we, uh, we get uh, a partnership with the city, just uh, by meeting someone on Wikipedia and uh, deleting uh, his edit. Um, now he's a dedicated uh, communist and Wikipedian. Uh, I think uh, he has lots of featured pictures uh, everywhere on commons and also on uh, the English Wikipedia. So, well, I, I think it's really in the sun. Uh, Amazing to see that the guy started by, uh, by having bad uh, edit and now uh, is one of the well best uh, contributor in the uh, comments. It's hard to say best because uh, we don't know how to, to judge the quality, but if you search quality pictures from museums, uh, you want to, to look for that guy. Um, well, okay. Okay. Okay, as I said, uh, I'm a computer scientist. I don't know how, it, uh, how that works. Um, so, well, first, of, first things, uh, the project we have with, uh, with the museum, uh, you can see some awesome pictures of uh, what we do uh, in this museum uh, by uh, this guy. He's called Didier Descoins. Uh, well, do you know that guy as a, a dinosaur uh, named after him? So. <laughs> It's quite into, uh, into natural thing. Uh, if you want to search, it's uh, Archaeodontosaurus Desquency. Uh, Archaeodontosaurus is uh, his uh, username, and uh, Desquency uh, is based on his uh, last name. Um, so the partnership we have is that Wikipedians and Wikimedians can take pictures of items that are not in the uh, permanent exhibition. Uh, well, it's a uh, lot of it's a uh, 2.5 billion pic, uh, pictures you can do. So the project is focused on quality more than quantity. For example, for two years we have more than uh, a thousand pictures on, on the project. Um, 
900 are in used on 2006 uh, projects. We have about 50 featured pictures on Wikipedia uh, on commands, more quality pictures, but well, that's good, I think. But this project has a secret goal. Uh, we want to win the, poti, uh, the picture of the year 2012, so next year, um, and defeat uh, the awesome pictures from the NASA. It's a, it, they always win or have an award. We, we want to be uh, first. So, for example, uh, pictures. This is a, well, I don't know which, which fish, but it, it will eat the, the NASA. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that was a joke. Yeah. But, Five minutes. Okay. So we have also a project which is really interesting. It's a uh, Project Truta. Uh, this guy was a curator from the Museum of Natural History uh, a century ago. Um, and he used to take a lot of pictures everywhere. Uh, in fact, he, he had to resign uh, from, uh, from being the curator of the museum because uh, the city was uh, not happy that he was always in the, in the mountain uh, taking pictures. Um, he took like... 20,000 pictures. Uh, you have to know that it was really difficult to take pictures. Uh, at that time, they, do the, they didn't have a single uh, lens reflex uh, like we have, uh, which can shoot uh, five pictures by, uh, by seconds. You know, uh, it's really difficult. Um, but now, so all this stuff is public domain. Um, all the stuff is split it in uh, three glam institutions. Uh, to be sure that if uh, one burns, uh, we still have uh, the others uh, which are good. So it's split in Archive of the City of Toulouse, in the Museum de, de Toulouse, which is a short name for Muse Museum of uh, Natural History, and well, also in the city library. So we had this awesome project to uh, reunite all that uh, on commands, tag we, uh, tag them with a category for each uh, source from where it comes. So it's awesome. Uh, but in fact, we have only 2% uh, of uh, these images. It's quite difficult to uh, make the institution to uh, contribute because they, they need time to do that. And as uh, it's uh, just uh, volunteer things, well, uh, they do what they can. After that, um, so we have a project where Wikimedians can take pictures, a project where institutions publish pictures. Um, this is a, a project where we try to build, uh, where volunteers try to build a, um, a partnership. Um, first, I got contacted uh, on Flickr by the museum. Uh, the Musée Saint-Raymond Saint is uh, the Roman Museum of Toulouse. Um, they asked me if they can use my pictures from Flickr and from Commons. So, well, I say, yeah, it's, it's in the licensing, so you can use it. Uh, most of the stuff are public domain or CC because it's uh, 3D art, but it's okay, use it. A few days after, I, I received an invitation from twi on Twitter, and well, we went to, uh, to an exhibition. Um, there's a picture from the exhibition here. Um, we put all the pictures online uh, as soon as we can. And the curator from the museum say, oh, it's, it's great what you do. Uh, please uh, meet us. And we, m <coughs> we meet her. OK, the Wi-Fi. Okay. Well, I can say it uh, without the, the slide. Um, we meet her. We agreed that we need a partnership to work together. Um, well, a few months after, we had it didn't work really well. In fact, uh, uh, she's a wife of a professional photographer, and professional photographer uh, kind of die in France. Uh, it's uh, it's messy for them uh, to to get money for what they do. So, say oh, taking pictures free for commons, it's uh, not good. But that's where, um, in fact. Uh, we had our staff to uh, to speak with her, and well, we finally had a, an agreement, and the partnership should uh, start uh, 
soon, uh, something like October 2012. But, well, really, you see, uh, we try to, to use our stuff only when uh, it's really needed to have someone to speak with, uh, with the other, because the stuff is used uh, with those kind of blocking uh, point, and, well, it worked. So we are really happy. Um, now, do we have uh, how many time do we have? We have five minutes. Okay. So just two conclusion. Um, what you really, what you really need to find when you want to do something is to find specialists and also we keep enthusiast people. That guy uh, who have a dinosaurus uh, named after him. Um, well, he's so enthusiastic that he can take, I don't know how many pictures a day, but it's what we, you really need to, to have. Uh, it's just one guy, and we have a partnership with the whole city. So use a social network, because now all glams are on social networks. And don't, don't fear to, uh, to brag about what, you, what the awesome thing you did somewhere, because the other museum will see it and say, Oh, we have to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, because um, all the museums in the city are paid by the city, so they are judged by the same pe person. And well, they look uh, crappy if they don't do the same thing than the, than the other. Contact them. Uh, yeah, bark about your successful actions. It's always good. Um, well or the community manager will read it, as, as I said. And, well, sometimes, uh, I don't see if you have uh, seen the, the, uh, the, uh, the, pu uh, the public domain uh, presentation, but be bold, don't ask, do things, uh, if you can do things without partnerships. <coughs> well, and the staff from chapters can help also. They also can buy books for you, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, this is uh, how to contact me if you don't know how to use my uh, SUL. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, do we have any questions for Pierre? Yeah, we can. Okay, thank you. Don't be shy. <laughs> no? Okay. Questions would be helpful while Yolanda sets her uh, presentation up. It's the heat getting to people, isn't it? It's getting towards the end of the day. Are we ready? It looks like we're ready. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Yolanda, who's going to talk to us about the power of Wikipedia, legitimacy and territorial control. And I'm as curious as I'm sure you are to know exactly what that means. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, hello. Um, hello. I would like to present uh, some issues uh, related to Wikipedia uh, fallouts, and in particular to Wikipedia from a geopolitical perspective, that emerged uh, in the last uh, uh, few years. Um, I think it's a topic uh, strongly related to the GLAMS, because uh, the collaboration between Wikipedia and uh, cultural institution where they are located is uh, somehow uh, reinforcing some tensions uh, that already existed. Um, my argument is that uh, Wikipedia is uh, somehow following an approach linked to nation building and it's uh, reinforcing nationalism. Um, I will be using some uh, artworks uh, within the presentation, just few, uh, because I think uh, uh, art contributes to theory and that um, a lot of artists uh, have been working on these specific issues, uh, issues. so I think it, they can uh, somehow reinforce, uh, or at least uh, I would like to, to use their work to reinforce what I, what I am trying to say. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit the context of uh, uh, my talk, which is uh, related to one of the major claim linked to post-colonial studies. So this need to rewrite history. Um, there have been a, a quest also, um, one of the major issues in the last uh, 60 years is uh, strongly re related on how we can create a knowledge that is uh, fully international, fully capable of acknowledging all points of view, that uh, it represents also the connection and the connectivities within, within uh, the world uh, that allows uh, all individuals 
individuals from uh, any background and also with a background that is uh, more and more uh, mixed, combined, uh, metis, as uh, some of the anthropologists uh, have, uh, have argued. Um, how we can acknowledge uh, this, uh, um, this the humankind that we actually are uh, in a way that knowledge uh, is uh, broader enough to include uh, um, all points of view. Um, there have been also a lot of uh, um, studies related to perception of the world. Obviously, uh, the invention of Africa, Orientalism, uh, the way um, the, the West have represented, or the winners have represented, the European have represented the world, obviously uh, portrays a world that, that can be also uh, renegotiated. And uh, it, it has been renegotiated. So we have a lot of uh, scholars uh, working also on uh, uh, appropriating a different discourse uh, related to their own country, their own culture. Um, at the same time, I think it's very interesting also what is going on uh, in the field of uh, territorial studies, in which we see that uh, porosity, so this capacity of the world of absorbing uh, different places, is, uh, is becoming also in, uh, in the last uh, um, decades uh, a major issue. Um, I'm thinking also of uh, the concept of global city, the idea that uh, we are in a city, but actually this city is not only here. Uh, when we think about uh, uh, outsourcing or how companies work in, within the world, obviously uh, sometimes the person that is answering the, the phone uh, when you're calling is not living in the city where you are. Maybe you think so, but it's actually in India or in another country. So all this uh, um, direction and those different studies are actually also connected to the way um, peer production have been studies, uh, studied in the last years. So looking at uh, how uh, collaboratively, collaboratively uh, uh, in a collaborative way, we can produce uh, something, we can uh, develop software, we can produce uh, or invent uh, an encyclopedia that anyone can edit. It's also another field of uh, research that somehow links to this discourse related to knowledge. Um, in my research question is actually related to on how to rewrite history. So uh, how we can uh, uh, think of a knowledge that uh, um, is more inclusive and is capable also of uh, renegotiating our current knowledge. And uh, I've been working since 2006 on Wikipedia uh, on this issue. So for me, Wikipedia with uh, its utopia and the way it works, it can actually be a place where this uh, more collaborative knowledge and this knowledge that acknowledges all point of view can actually be uh, a place uh, uh, that can uh, somehow respond to some of the major questions that have been uh, brought up in the last uh, half century. Um, I've been working since, since 2007 uh, specifically on a project called uh, Wiki Africa, and uh, later on on a new project called uh, Share Your Knowledge um, that is a project uh, aiming at Africanizing Wikipedia. Africanizing Wikipedia, of course, is uh, quite a, a strange expression. Um, it meant uh, for uh, Lettera 27 Foundation, uh, Lettera 27 Foundation, the foundation I, I collaborate with, uh, it meant at the beginning to support the new researchers, uh, it supported presentations around the world, the links with a major festival, presenting the project and proposing also scholars and a uh, major um, association of uh, African uh, scholars to contribute to Wikipedia. And later on, uh, we decided in 2010 to create a milestone to produce 30,000 African contribution by the end of 2012. We are currently working exactly on this. And to reach this goal, we thought to uh, start with existing content uh, that are already digital, and obviously they are in uh, cultural institutions. So we've been evolving. This is a very limited list of the institutions that we've been working with, and there are many others. Uh, um, my colleague Ayla uh, just presented this morning some of the institutions that are currently uh, working specifically on the continent, in the continent and uh, it's about uh, uh, 60 institutions that are currently involved. So working with uh, archives, library, um, art centers, museums, and uh, um, uh, inviting them to use a Creative Commons license and uploading their content on Wikipedia, either text uh, or images, documents. Um, what came out of uh, this, uh, this work is actually um, uh, having to cross uh, some of the dynamics of Wikipedia that I was not expecting. And uh, is exactly um, what I was uh, talking about. So the, uh, the approach of nation building. Um, 
obviously it's not difficult to uh, acknowledge the dimension of Wikipedia and the, the power of it. So the potential, um, the, the potentiality and the capacity of reaching the world that Wikipedia has compared to any other source of knowledge. Uh, just to uh, refer to the 365 million readers gives uh, an idea with uh, over 280 uh, linguistic version. Um, but what is uh, uh, very uh, peculiar of uh, the, uh, the current situation of Wikipedia is that somehow is uh, is following um, a very uh, uh, a very common pattern pattern of uh, nations. So Wikipedia is basically working as uh, um, as many of the nations normally do with uh, their citizens. And uh, to be more specifically, I'd like to mention um, uh, four of the major approaches that a nation normally use. The first one is language. Uh, the second one is uh, monuments and cultural heritage. The third one is education. And the fourth one is territorial control, so uh, this uh, c control over um, places. Um, the first one is uh, language. What I mean is uh, the attention that Wikipedia is, uh, is putting on uh, developing uh, languages um, is a very specific focus. A lot of Wikipedians are very interested in uh, um, uh, broader the number of uh, um, language um, editions of Wikipedia. Um, and in particular, when you think about the discussion related to Africa, this is a major issue. This is very often one of the requests that is done uh, related to the content. So we need to to enlarge uh, the, the number of local languages represented. We need the, to reinforce uh, uh, African languages. And this is also one of the topics we heard uh, this morning by, in the speech of uh, Jimmy Wales. The reality, though, is that uh, uh, languages has a very strong political power. And it is uh, a typical tool used also for uh, identity, uh, for recognition of identities. Um, if we think, for example, of uh, the Catalan uh, Wikipedia version, obviously there is a political and ideological meaning of supporting a, a Wikipedia in a specific language. Um, if you refer to it to Africa, and uh, I'm obviously I'm taking uh, the majority of the example from Africa because it's uh, uh, the, the work I've been doing in the last years. Um, if we take, uh, for example, uh, Warof, which is one of the major speaking languages in uh, Senegal, what you will see is that uh, encouraging the production of uh, articles in Senegal in uh, Warof is a very sophisticated and intellectual um, I would say activity. Uh, there are scholars that have been working on uh, uh, Wolof. Uh, one of the major well-known writer of uh, Wolof books is uh, uh, Bubakar Boris Diop, which is uh, one of the director of uh, uh, the national newspaper. But uh, obviously the meaning of encouraging Wolof uh, production in Africa does not necessarily uh, mean to include more uh, people in writing on uh, Wikipedia, because uh, it is a very uh, as I was saying, very sophisticated to write. Uh, the educational system is in French, and obviously writing uh, Wolof is uh, something that you n uh, learn more easily in a uh, university outside, in anthropology classes, than uh, in, in Senegal itself. Um, also, um, the meaning of uh, developing an encyclopedia in Wolof rather than another African language has a very strong uh, ideological and uh, ethnic uh, uh, implication. So you're reinforcing a group uh, compared to other, a group that has also a political role within the country. So I think this implication needs to be acknowledged because obviously uh, uh, seeing languages as uh, something that uh, an element that is only positive or that can be seen as a uh, uh, innocent and good uh, in a let's say non-critical way it can be quite dangerous and it can also produce implications that not necessarily Wikipedia is looking for. Uh, another aspect is a monument and cultural heritage. Well uh, it's not obviously to uh, uh, under uh, represent or um, misrepresent uh, the, the beauty and the amazing power of uh, Wikilove's monument, which I believe uh, is a great project. But uh, focusing on cultural heritage and on monuments has a very strong political implication. Um, it is uh, uh, one of the um, 
one of the essential activity of a government when it wants to highlight uh, the story of a country. It's also the way a nation cons constructs its own history. One of the main uh, cases, probably in one of the recent cases, is uh, South Africa. At the end of apartheid, a lot of discussion have been made about uh, the monuments that uh, were present in South Africa and how you renegotiate and how you uh, um, rewrite a history, how you acknowledge also uh, other people within a history. And also monuments are, are strongly related to the Cold War fight and also to the policy after World War II. So all the implications that are related to why you are promoting uh, uh, cultural heritage from different countries as a, as a uh, uh, well, it is a critical issue. It's uh, an issue that needs also to be comprehended in a uh, larger frame. Um, another one is education. Also, education is a typical tool uh, through which uh, uh, a nation educates its citizens. And uh, right now, uh, Wikipedia um, is really somehow substituting uh, textbooks. It's becoming the word textbook. And also, the capacity of Wikipedia of educating this generation of educating also our future generation has also some implication. The way you talk about uh, issues, the, the words that you use also related to demography, the history you will, um, a, a different uh, equilibrium. And also um, it has a strong connection related to GLAMS. Um, the first uh, and the most important uh, relationship between a uh, uh, nation and uh, the presence of chapters and the GLAM is that cultural institutions normally need for uh, negotiating or for establishing partnership um, somehow that is legitimate to speak on behalf of Wikipedia. Um, they've been uh, also talking about uh, blackout, blackouts and the uh, lobbying capacity of Wikipedia show that the legitimacy of uh, Wikipedia is growing. So Wikipedia can speak with governments, can uh, somehow negotiate, can uh, um, produce also a um, is an inter, in a, a new uh, a new power within uh, uh, the discussion also related to politics and uh, the glams are reinforcing uh, this this legitimacy and giving a lot of uh, responsibility also to the glams to the Wikimedia chapter. This is also positive because somehow it encourages a uh, Wikimedia chapter to reinforce uh, their structure and uh, the glams have been uh, a, a very important activity also for the chapters and also a way to develop uh, further and also to create also uh, um, enrich their program. But uh, it's also um, important to um, see this uh, as a critical point because obviously where a chapter is not present, how you can uh, negotiate with uh, Wikipedia. And the second issue is also um, uh, a chapter tend, a national chapter tend to have as a duty also to negotiate with major institution. It is more difficult for a smaller institution that uh, maybe has a uh, uh, I don't know, a small collection of uh, documentation that is maybe interesting for one field but not uh, the British Museum, not the major museums, to actually uh, get into the system. So to be able to collaborate with Wikipedia and to have uh, uh, the, the support of the chapter. Um, to finish, I, uh, to conclude, I would like, um, I, I would like to uh, point out uh, the importance of uh, uh, one of the pillars of Wikipedia, which is uh, acknowledging all point of view. I think uh, somehow uh, this uh, very simple principle, it's even stronger than uh, diversity. I think this is also a, a, a principle that can uh, offline uh, facilitate uh, the way Wikipedia acts and also can uh, uh, reinforce also the way policy are, are dealt with. I think also it's not all negative, uh, so I'm not, uh, uh, um, I think it's uh, something that maybe needs to be seen or to be discussed or to be included into discussions. But I think also um, the fact that uh, uh, Wikipedia's role is growing and its capacity also to influencing education, uh, it can be a very interesting way. And also the link with nations, uh, maybe enlarging obviously the uh, number of nations that have a representative and reinforcing communities uh, also in nations that do not have an official chapter can be also a way to really distribute activities. But uh, I, um, I wanted to use my time also to point out some of the uh, aspects of Wikipedia that I, I believe uh, uh, can be object of more research. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Do we have any questions? No questions?
You really want to go home now, don't you? <laughs> okay, yes, one at the back, gentlemen. Okay, um, as I understand it, um, the, the critical points that uh, you underlined are reflecting the critical points of you know the world that the history has. Uh, like Wikipedia is so big that some, like in this, in this case, it just reflects criticalities that that we have, like the history of nation, like conflicts, uh, and you know, like ev ev everything you mentioned before. So I wanted to ask you which alternatives you you see, for example, uh, at Wikimedia chapters that uh, they are national based, and uh, which which kind of structure would you like? Uh, uh, to maybe yes, to negotiate with institution, like to. I think general principles would be a very good uh, tool. So working, uh, uh, Wikipedia has uh, pillars. I think also the Wikimedia chapter should focus more on, uh, on policies that are uh, more idealistic policy that should uh, somehow be transversal and influence the work of uh, all chapters uh, within the movement. So somehow the movement uh, should consider that uh, it has also a offline uh, uh, fallout, not only the online one. So not thinking that uh, the work uh, uh, it's there, but it's a bit o uh, all over. So I think uh, pillars could be uh, a very strong tool. I also think uh, thematic approach uh, uh, is something that uh, uh, can be useful. So working more on transversal uh, theme. Uh, archaeology uh, currently is becoming uh, an interesting uh, theme. Uh, also the participation of uh, institution, libraries in a more transversal way can be also a way. Um, I think, um, from my point of view, I think um, there are also issues that need to emerge. My uh, interest in presenting also those, uh, um, uh, those uh, uh, preliminary thoughts, let's say, uh, it's also to uh, bring, um, bring up a discussion also to something that uh, I didn't notice that have been uh, discussed yet. Um, personally, for uh, Wiki Africa project, we are uh, uh, currently discuss, uh, discussing with our partner, the Africa Center in South Africa, to develop in the next three years a, a, a project related to primary school education, so strongly linked to education and strongly linked to nation, uh, uh, to single nation. The idea is to uh, up upload on Wikipedia content uh, um, uh, related to all the primary school diploma of all uh, African countries plus Italy, but I'm sorry for personal interest. Uh, I have two children, so <laughs> just to mention. That. Uh, but um, the idea is also to, since we, we live in a system that is very nation-based, uh, the fact that it's nation-based, it can also be turned into an advantage. But I think it needs to be acknowledged also the, the risk of it. OK, question at the front here. Um, thank you for, for your talk. Uh, I'm wondering about, uh, I forget who said it, that uh, Wikipedia's basic method of, uh, of fact-based expository writing and citing sources, et cetera, is itself a Western value or a Western way, and, and as such may be suitable or, or inappropriate or undesirable for other cultures to express their collections of knowledge and their perception of what is a fact. Uh, have you encountered in your work that kind of attitude or which, which would imply resistance to Wikipedia's uh, mode, in particular in the more mature projects. Um, uh, and if so, what do, you, what do you think we can do about it? Um, well, I think, uh, of course, this is an issue that uh, had been uh, brought up by many scholars, and uh, there is absolutely uh, many perspectives also on the way uh, um, an encyclopedia, the fact even that it is an encyclopedia is a critical point. Uh, the structure of an encyclopedia, of course, is a, a child of uh, uh, our uh, 18th century. So there are lots of issues uh, related also on the, how the encyclopedia in itself uh, functions. There is also a lot of discussion about categories, uh, how, for example, uh, fractals uh, can represent m better mathematics and uh, graphic design in, uh, in Africa rather than uh, a more uh, um, M rather more than uh, the mathematics we study currently at school. So definitely there is, there is also an issue related to the fact that uh, only Africans can uh, represent better their knowledge than uh, uh, people not living on the continent. So there are lots of different uh, perspectives. Personally, I really like the approach of uh, Rashid Arain, which is an uh, intellectual from uh, Great Britain. Um, 
who is also the person that uh, the author of this sentence, we need uh, to rewrite history. His approach is uh, definitely more global. So in his, in his perspective, uh, it is uh, individual responsibility to work for an universal knowledge. So it is not, uh, um, and obviously each person gives a contribution. Um, and also uh, the work of uh, Achille Mbembe that is uh, very strongly col co connected to connectivity and uh, looking for how to uh, um, reduce borders is another way that I, I, I share, let's say, in the discussion related on how writing history. Uh, so I think there are issues uh, related to the structure in itself of Wikipedia, and uh, they've been uh, brought up uh, the way category are. Uh, there have been also studies related to how the category do not allow um, a certain perspective of uh, knowledge uh, to be included. Mm -hmm. So definitely there are. Uh, I think also uh, Wikipedia is not the only tool, but uh, somehow it is the most powerful tool at the moment. So we, um, it's the, the tool that is capable of reaching the broad broader amounts of people and also it is currently a very powerful tool so not intervening there I think uh, that would be a failure and also the advantage of Wikipedia is that uh, obviously you can add more categories but um, I think uh, um, a work needs to be done progressively because uh, uh, Wikipedia responds uh, I think uh, um, it responds well either to progressive knowledge, so adding more content to it in a, uh, in a way that is connected to the existing content, or on critical mass. I think uh, those two approaches are producing the best results. And that is why I think uh, uh, we could uh, add more information about uh, fractal mathematics, and uh, we can have uh, more information about or uh, a better uh, system of uh, catalogized uh, categorization of uh, information, but only when we start to have uh, um, um, a basis of knowledge, also a basis of uh, information. So I think we need to, um, it's not going to be possible to right now renegotiate categories if there is not a, ma a critical mass of content that somehow illustrate in a basic way uh, knowledge. But I make a very basic example. Uh, I, I strongly believe uh, that also historiography is a very good approach for Wikipedia. The case of uh, ethnographic groups uh, in Africa. At the moment, Wikipedia, from an anthropological point of view, somehow represent the knowledge of last century uh, for a very basic reason. Sources are pub in public domain. Everything that has been studied in the last uh, 60 years is very uh, limited uh, acknowledge, uh, also because it's very limitedly um, accessible to Wikipedians. Uh, normally, there are not uh, open access magazines, abstracts are not easily accessible. Uh, so also sources are not widely available at all. And also, uh, what is the mainstream is definitely the knowledge of 19th century, well, uh, 20th century, sorry. Um, so what you, well, actually 19th and century is more correct because uh, uh, the author needs to be done to by, uh, for 70 years. Um, so what you end up with uh, is a lot of information about ethnic groups and also the demography on Wikipedia can of correspond to that. And uh, you can add layers of information by acknowledging the historiographical uh, role of uh, ethnography. So if you contextualize those information, somehow you allow uh, the reader to understand that there are different systems also to uh, categorize knowledge and also to, um, to see that that kind of uh, uh, story was uh, talked in the same time in which uh, 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 humankind uh, was measured his, his uh, <laughs> brain to see the size. So you, it allows us to create a different uh, approach. So I believe there are possibility also to enlarge. And it's not true that uh, Wikipedia only includes facts. It also includes uh, uh, reviews, uh, historiography, the story of concept, a lot of information that allows to cross uh, and also um, contextualize, and also uh, synchronic information, something that a textbook uh, that we probably all uh, uh, grow up with didn't allow. Allowed. We only had our chapters. Uh, so, um, at the risk of keeping people from the coffee for one more minute, you, you gave a, a pretty thorough theoretical answer, but I was actually asking about your practice. Have you seen institutions or, 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 or would be contributors actually come in to clash with the Wikipedia community? Yes. And how was that resolved? So I, I'm, you know, over the, the theoretical. So no, when, uh, one of the problems that we crossed. Well, my, question, my question is, um, in the microphone. I have a pretty loud voice. I'll say that my question was, uh, have there been conflicts, and now I feel 
Yes. My question was, have there been conflicts between uh, would-be contributors to Wikipedia of, of knowledge about, for example, Africa, whether they be institutions or individuals, uh, um, clashes between their desire or, or drive or, or preferred way of contributing content and the established norms of the mature, larger Wikipedias? And if so, how that clash was resolved in practice? And we, we just heard a pretty thorough uh, uh, examination of the theoretical underpinnings of that question. But I was wondering about the practice. I have a very practical example. In 2008, an institution in South Africa called Chimurenga, it's a magazine, very well known and now growing also as a reputation, uh, did a research on uh, magazines and uh, publications that influence knowledge in Africa on, and ideas. So they made a list of uh, uh, 24 uh, uh, publications and they edited, uh, uh, well, they did, uh, they created a first source uh, on, uh, on a specific website called the Chimurenga Library. Uh, they uh, used the license that obviously allowed them to, uh, at the time it was the GNU, it, the, uh, Wikipedia was not under Creative Commons attribution share alike. So they made those articles very Wikipedian somehow structured, so with uh, the introduction, everything needed. So we're talking about major publications, so not the small ones, but obviously coming from different sources. The reaction they had was very violent. The first one was uh, right in English, because they published on uh, uh, English Wikipedia, and uh, this magazine is an English uh, magazine, but from South Africa and uh, with a very, uh, let's say, black, because this is how they, they would call it, uh, English. So the first difficulty was related to language, and it was very humiliating. Um, the second problem was related to notability, which is probably one of the biggest issue and which emerges regular, regularly. Um, not because uh, sources were, were not cited, but because the authority of those uh, sources were questioned. So at the end, uh, the request is, was to uh, not citing sources, but citing sources that uh, Wikipedia would know. So the Times, <laughs> rather than uh, Wired. But uh, if you were citing a national newspaper in, Lua in uh, Lagos, that would not be uh, relevant. Also, they needed to um, really discuss uh, the value of what they were doing. And there are very major publication, a Pan-African publication, very well known in Africa. So they, they lived for 10 years. They've been acknowledged. They received prizes. They were in Documenta Castle exhibition, which is probably the most important word exhibition of contemporary art within the magazine, and they needed to explain why they were important or relevant at all, which was uh, lived in an extremely violent way, also because uh, the, diffi the difficulty for an African institution to be acknowledged worldwide are probably stronger than uh, for another institution. Um, other difficulties were related obviously to uh, where to put those content rather than categories. Um, Wikipedia was not uh, somehow ready for it uh, because uh, all uh, information related to uh, newspaper, press, uh, even articles related to some of the country is not strong enough to uh, include a specific articles on a publication on that country, or at least this uh, same. So those are practical information. And so we responded with a critical mass of content. The reason why Wiki Africa was a structure with 30,000 uh, contribution by the end of this year was really to try to bridge uh, Wikimedia uh, chapters and also to try to uh, produce a critical mass that would allow other contributors to uh, be facilitated somehow, so people would hear about Africa. We also had difficulties related to negotiation with chapters. That was another issue. Um, also because uh, the, the boundaries between our work that is somehow is transversal and uh, bridges different uh, uh, countries because it's a thematic approach didn't fit with uh, the current uh, situation. So uh, the problem is that an Af a project thematic like Wiki Africa does not fit in any policy and is not uh, includable somehow. So this is also how we address uh, issues related to nation building and uh, nationalism. Thank you, Yolanda. And at that point, I think we have to wrap up. So thank you for those of you who've asked questions.